If this panhandler syndicate must be headed up by someone far more intelligent than Big Louis Arkin. Obviously, Patsy. But who? I don't know yet. But whoever it is, he's made a mistake. What? What kind of mistake? Murder. Now I can track him down and find out who he is. Oh, but Nick, if he's as clever as you say he is, he won't be easy to find. Oh, I'm not going to find him. I'm going to let him find me. Now, the case of the persistent beggars. Today's exciting Nick Carter adventure brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. Our story begins in a hideout in a deserted riverfront warehouse. A masked man, whose Confederates fear and know him only as the boss, watches silently as his lieutenant, Big Louis Arkin, opens a large bag of currency and dumps it on the table. Uh, there it is, boss. Today's haul. Did everyone of our collectors pay off, Louis? Yeah, yeah. Every panhandler in the organization kicked in. Five dollars a man, like they've been doing every day. You've told them that my orders are to use no actual violence when they solicit funds from the public? Oh, yeah, yeah, boss. Just like you told me. No rough stuff. Precisely, Louis. No rough stuff. However, I have no objections if our collectors are, shall we say, persistent. Uh, yeah, but some people, boss, well, they're cheapskates. They only come across with a dime or a quarter when our boys put the touch on them. Then tell the boys that's not enough. Better get a dollar bill out of everybody they approach, even if they have to scare them to death. But, boss, uh, you don't mean they should get too tough. Not too tough, Louis. But tough enough. Understand? Oh, yeah, yeah, I get you. Still, boss, you ain't doing so bad right now, you know. A thousand dollars a Louis, day. do you by any chance envy my success? Me? Oh, no, boss, no. I... I wouldn't want you to be unhappy working for me, Louis. I'm not, boss. Honest, I, I'm satisfied with my cut. After all, it's I who organize these poor, downtrodden beggars. Assign them to their territories, give them what protection I can. Sure, boss, sure. And it's a sweet record I got. Louis, have... your choice of words is offensive. Huh? This is not a racket. This is a legitimate business, all in the name of sweet charity. Certainly it's no crime for a poor man down on his luck to beg a dollar for food and shelter. Lady, can you let a hungry man have a little something to get a bite to eat? Oh, well, here's a dime. A dime? Well, yes, I... Give me that dollar bill. I got have uh, money. Uh, I'm uh, desperate, see? Well, here. Here, take it. Hey, look, Jack. Uh, can you spare a buck? M my wife's sick, and I got to buy her some medicine. Hey, what goes on here? You're the third panhandler who's approached me tonight. I'm not going to give away any more... Look, Jack, I'm a desperate guy. I need dough. And you better not be a cheapskate about it. Understand? Mm, all right, here you are. A buck ain't enough, Jack. Not enough? I got a lot of medicine to buy. Better make it two. Hey, lady. <laughs> it's all right, lady. I ain't gonna hurt you. Oh, well, it's, it's so dark in this street now. Well, I didn't... In that do doorway, I... Look, lady, could you stake a hungry guy to a dollar? I'm down on my luck, see? I'm starving. No way. Oh, well, yes. Oh, uh, so now, just a minute. I, uh, I've got a dollar here in my purse. I have uh... you got a lot more than that in your pocketbook, well, lady. I, I... Look, I'm pretty hungry, lady. I could use all that dough. Oh, no. No, no, please. It's all the money I've got. I've got hand it over. Oh, no. I no. said hand it over. No. Come on. Please. Listen to me. Oh. Hey, call the cops, will you? Oh. I'll teach oh. you. You wish oh. you never met up with Foxy oh. Farrow when I get through with you. Oh. Oh. Sergeant. Thanks, Patsy. Hi, Matty. Hi, Nick. Hey, what's on your mind? Plenty, Nick. You know those panhandlers that have been mushrooming all over town lately? Yeah. No, I'll say we do. Well, you can't walk two blocks these days without one of them approaching you. Yeah. Well, the pressure's on down at headquarters. 
Newspapers are after us hot and heavy to clean up the city. So is the mayor. And every day of the week we get our ears beaten off by the Citizens Reform League. Oh, yes. That's headed up by John Prentice, the big real estate man. Yeah, Prentice. Sergeant, can't you pick up these beggars on a vagrancy charge? Sure we can. We do pinch a few of them, but we can't arrest them all. Mm. And if you could, Patsy, there isn't much you could do to them on a simple vagrancy charge. Yeah, that's just it, Nick. The judge can fine them or give them a jail sentence, but the jail sentence is only a couple of days. Soon as they're out, they go right back again begging on the street. Oh, but suppose they're fined. <laughs> big Louis Arkin is right there in night court to pay off the fine. What? Big Louie? Yeah. Well, that's very interesting, Maddie. Why should a big operator like Big Louie take such an interest in down-and-out panhandlers? Oh, I wish I knew. Look, Nick, the commissioner asked me to stop in and see whether you would take a hand in this business, huh? I'll be glad to, Maddie. This panhandler situation isn't just a nuisance, it seems. It's much more than that. What do you mean, Nick? I mean everything points to it being an organized racket. An organized racket? Yes. First of all, there's Big Louie, always on hand to pay the fine for any beggar that gets arrested. Huh. Second, these beggars have sprung up all over the city, on every side street, like the plague. Uh. And third, they seem to use the same methods of terrorizing citizens. Hey, you got something there, Nick. If we could only get some kind of a break, maybe we... I'll get it, Nick. Uh. Nick Carter's office, Patsy Bowen speaking. Yes, he is. It's for you, Sergeant. Headquarters. Oh, oh thanks, Patsy. Uh, Sergeant Matheson speaking. Yes, O'Rourke. What? Where? What did she say? Okay, O'Rourke, I'll get right on it. What is it, Matty? It looks like the break I was just talking about. Oh, yeah? What? Yep. It's not just vagrancy anymore, Nick. This time it's cold-blooded murder. Murder? Yep. A woman was blackjacked and robbed by one of these panhandlers on a deserted street. She died on her way to the hospital. Oh. But before that, she was conscious for just a minute and she talked. Yes, she identified her murderer as Foxy Farrell. Foxy Farrell? Right. Dick, wasn't he one of Big Louie Arkin's thugs in the old days? Yes. wonder what he's doing panhandling. Well, I don't know, but I'm going to send out a pickup call for him right away. Oh, and while you're about it, Matty. Yeah? Pick up Big Louie. I'd like to ask him a few questions. <laughs> Now look, Louie, there's a homicide rap that goes with this. You better come clean. Now, for the last time, where's Farrell hiding out? Now, Sergeant, you're looking for Foxy, not me. Why don't you find him? Louie, you're up to your neck in this, and we know it. Then prove it, Sergeant. Why, you... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, Matty. No yeah. use getting upset. Uh... If Louie's in this, we'll find out sooner or later. Louie, why have you been paying the fines of these panhandlers when they come into court? Well, Carter, I'm a sentimental kind of guy, and a lot of these drifters used to be old friends of mine. <laughs> now, if you two coppers haven't got any more questions, I got a date. Nothing now. doing, you. You're staying right here until we're ready to let you go. On suspicion, Sergeant? Wait. Don't try to pull that phony charge on me. I got a lawyer who busted apart in five minutes, and you know it. Now, you better let him go, man. No. We can always pick him up later if we need him. All right, come in. I. Oh, it's you, Mr. Prentice. Yes, Sergeant. Uh, Nick, this is Mr. Prentice, head of the Citizens Reform League. Yes, I've met Mr. Prentice. And I think you know Big Louie Arkin. Yes, very well. Don't I, Louie? Yeah. And I'm not forgetting you, Prentice. You sent me up the river for two years, and one of these days... One of these days, we're going to clean such scum as you out of this town. Ah, you reformers give me a pain. I remember this, Prentice. This town ain't big enough to hold you and me both. Huh. What's Big Louie doing here, Sergeant? We've been trying to nail him down on this panhandler killing. I see. Oh, and speaking of that, Sergeant, when are we going to get some action? Uh, it's getting so a decent citizen can't walk the streets anymore. And now, now it's come to murder. I'm sure we'll find the killer, Mr. Prentice. Well, I hope so, Mr. Carter. I'm glad to see that you've taken an interest in this case. And as for the police, Sergeant Matheson, we demand that every resource of the department be thrown into solving this case. Yeah, sure, sure. We're doing everything we can. Well, I'll see that you do. Our league has considerable influence at City Hall. And if necessary, we'll shake up the whole police department. Good day. 
Nick, he's out for blood, no mistake. Yeah. Look, Matty. What? There's only one thing to do. Yeah? Get on the inside of this panhandling setup. Try to find out who runs it. I'm convinced that Big Louie runs it. I'm not. Take a bigger brain than Louie's to organize and run a racket like this. Mm Mm-hmm. No, maybe. Uh, Have you got any idea how you're going to get on the inside? What do you think? Hello, boss. I, uh, uh, Big Louie said you wanted to see me. Sit down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, what's it all about? Foxy. You shouldn't have killed that woman. Oh, now, listen, boss. You knew my orders. No violence. Yeah, 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 but, but boss, when I hit her up for the touch, she started to put up a fight. Gee, you can hear her yell for the cops a mile away. Her purse was gone, Foxy, and you took it. Oh, boss, I... I run a legitimate business, Foxy. The collection of money for the poor and downtrodden. Not robbery and murder. You know the rules of my syndicate. Yeah, but uh, I... Boss! Boss, what are you going to do? To use the underworld expression, Foxy, you're hot. The police are after you, and worse than that, Nick Carter has been brought into the case. Yeah, but boss... Foxy, I have no use for bunglers in my syndicate. I'm going to have to dispense with your services. No! No, but boss, let me get out of town. I don't know who you are. You're always wearing that mask. Let me get out of town. Good. It's a pity, Foxy. You let your greed overcome your good judgment. <laughs> Bowen? What? Miss Bowen? What? How do you know my name? I seen you around with Nick Carter. Look, Miss Bowen, my name's Davis. Snuffy Davis. I ain't had a thing to eat since two days ago. Could you spare a buck or two for a poor hungry guy? No. I'm sorry. Hey, now, look, lady, I'm down on my luck, and I need some dough. Get your hand off my arm. Oh, no, not till you come across. Get your hands off me, please. Hey, Pat. What? Huh? That's a lot. What? Yes. Alias Snuffy Davis. Oh, Nick, for heaven's sake, you gave me the scare of my life. What on earth are you doing in those dirty, ragged old clothes? <laughs> I never suspected. Good, if you didn't, no one else will. Looks as if I passed the acid test with flying colors. Well, Nick, what on earth are you up to? Going to do a little panhandling on my own, Patsy. But why? I have an idea that instead of my having to look for the men who are running this panhandler's racket... They're going to look for me. And now back to the case of the persistent beggars. Today's Nick Carter adventure brought to you by All Dutch Cleanser. It is afternoon now, and as we rejoin Nick, now Snuffy Davis, he is panhandling his way up the busy city street. Suddenly, he finds a hand on his shoulder. He turns around to see a tough-looking vagrant with hard blue eyes. Uh, you're mulching out of your territory, ain't you, Jack? What you talking about? It's a free country, ain't it? I can work any place I want to. Eh, not in this town you can't. What's your name, Jack? Hey, look, you, you just work your side of the street and I'll work mine. Oh, wise guy, huh? Come on, spill it before I wipe up the sidewalk with you. Hey, uh... What's your name? Okay, okay, don't get sore. My name's Snuffy Davis. Ah, Snuffy Davis, huh? That's right. I just blew into town from Union City. I was just mooching a buck or two when you came along. Uh, You can't work this town unless you belong to the syndicate. What syndicate? We got a set up here. Everything's organized. You got to belong and pay off or else. And what do you mean, pay off? Who's running this racket? Kind of nosy, ain't you, pal? No, no, but... I don't want to work. How do I join this, uh, this syndicate? Ah, that's better. Now you're showing sense. You know what a boulevard tavern is? Yeah. Go in there and ask to see Big Louie Arkin. 
Big Louie Orkin. Yeah. Just tell him Eddie sent you. Hey, you... You Big Louie Orkin? That's right, bum. What do you want? My name's Snuffy Davis. Eddie sent me. I see. What do you want? I want to work the street. But Eddie says I got to belong to the, to the syndicate. That's right. Cost you five bucks a day, every day. Five bucks a day? Hey, that's a lot of dough. Look, Bum, you can take it or leave it. Ain't much choice, is there? All right. I'll take it. Okay. First, you'll have to talk to the boss. The boss? But I thought that you run this record. You ask too many questions, Snuffy. Keep your trap shut and come with me. Your name's Snuffy Davis? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, that's right. I thought you'd like to look him over first, boss. Quite right, Louie. Snuffy, you say you're from Union City. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's right. Where's the Lyceum Theater in Union City? The Lyceum Theater? Yes, where is it? Why, it's uh, it's on Grand Avenue. And the public library? On State Street. Hmm. Then you have been there. Oh, sure, sure, I told you. Never mind. I... You think he's all right, Louie? Yeah, sure, boss. I give him a good going over. He'll do. He knows the rules, too. Snuffy, the important thing is no violence. I conduct a legitimate business, and I don't want any trouble with the police. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I get you. I get you. Louis here will collect my commission every night. And one more thing, Snuffy. Yeah? If you ever breathe a word about coming to this warehouse or about this syndicate, your life won't be worth a panhandler's dime. You understand? Oh, sure, sure, sure. I get you. I, I get you. All right, Louis, give him a territory and put him to work. Ben. Oh, Mr. Prentice. Yes, Miss Bowen. I just dropped by to see whether Mr. Carter has made any progress in breaking up this vicious gang of panhandlers. Well, he's working on it now, Mr. Prentice. And knowing Mr. Carter as I do... Well, I... I... Excuse me. Uh, Nick Carter's office, Patsy Bowen speaking. Patsy, this is Nick. Oh. I'm calling from a drugstore phone booth at River and Ford. River and Ford. Yes, now listen closely, Patsy. Mm-hmm. I met the big shot who runs this whole panhandler syndicate a half hour ago at a deserted warehouse on the riverfront. At a deserted warehouse? Nick, who is he? I don't know yet. He wore a mask. A mask? Yes, covers his whole face. I met him through Big Louie Arkin, who turns out to be his right-hand man. Uh-huh, so there is someone higher than Big Louie. There is. Now, listen closely, Patsy. Right. I picked up a clue to the boss's identity, and I need your help. Uh-huh. He parked his car in a dirt driveway next to the warehouse. I didn't see the car, but I went back later and checked the tire tracks. Oh, what was the tire pattern? There was nothing in the tire pattern. Mm. Four new tires of a common make. But the width of the car, the distance between the right and left wheel tracks. Give me a tip-off. The width of the car? Yes. The boss, whoever he is, isn't driving an American car. Because the distance between his wheels isn't standard. In short, Patsy, he's driving some foreign car. Hmm. Now listen closely. Yes, sir. I measure the distance between the wheels. It's five feet, two inches. Check the Automobile Association and find out what foreign make car measures that wheel distance. You got it? Right. Check Automobile Association and find out what foreign car measures two, uh, five feet, two inches in width between wheels. That's right. Five feet, two inches. When you find the make of the car, call the Bureau of Motor Vehicles and check who owns a car of that make. Uh-huh. Can't be very common. After you find out, call me back right here. All right, Nick. I'll get to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles right away. Oh, what's the number where you are? Virginia 90568. Right, now wait for your call. All right, Nick, I'll hurry. Bye. Oh, Mr. Prentice, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. That's uh, quite all right. I, I'll be running along now. I have a great deal to do in a short time. Good day. I've got news. Yeah? 
The car measuring a width of five feet two inches is an English arrow. There are only four in the whole state, and only one in the city. And that's owned by John Prentice. What? Prentice? Of the Citizens Reform League? Right. You don't suppose he could... Oh, uh, hold a minute, Nick. Someone's coming in. Oh, it's Sergeant Matheson. Hi, Sergeant. Hi, Patsy. Patsy, look. Yeah. Prentice may be in this. And we've got to check the other three people who own aero cars before we can make sure. Mm-hmm. Hey, wait a minute. What? What is it, Nick? Two mugs came into the drugstore just now. They're watching me. Oh, Nick. I recognize one of them. Panhandler named Eddie. Yeah, they're after me all right, Patsy. Nick, then Prentice is the boss. What? He was in the office when you called me and overheard our conversation. Right. And he went out and phoned his men to pick me up. Oh? Nick, what are the thugs doing now? They're moving this way toward the phone booth. And they've got guns. Oh, quick, Patsy. Put Manny on the phone. <laughs> Well, Nick is in a real spot. Trapped in a phone booth with two of Prentice's men coming to pick him up. We'll be back to see what happens in just a moment. And now for the conclusion of the case of the persistent beggars. Today's Nick Carter adventure brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. As we pick up our story, two of Prentice's thugs are headed toward the phone booth to get Nick as Matty's voice comes over the wire. Yeah, Nick, what is it? Matty, I've got to talk fast. Two mugs have me trapped in a drugstore phone booth at River and Forth. I'll have every prowl car in the neighborhood down there in five minutes, Nick. Five minutes may be too late. They're here now. Listen, Matty, if you miss me here, try that big deserted warehouse next to the fur exchange. Stop that phone, Carter. Another word and I'll blow your brains out. Yeah, we're going for a little ride, wise guy. The boss wants to see you. <laughs> It looks as though you've outsmarted yourself. On the contrary, Prentice, you've outsmarted yourself. Your racket has ended. My dear Carter, my work may be ended, but so is yours. Wait a minute, Carter. You say the boss here is Prentice? That's right, Louis. Prentice, head of the Citizens Reform League, the man who sent you up the river. Why, you double cross? Don't make a move, Louis. The same goes for you, Carter. As you see, I've got a gun. Take off that mask. Why not, Louis? There you are. So you are, Prentice. That citizen's reform stuff was just a blind. Exactly, Louis. I'm about to retire with my earnings. Naturally, I intend that both of you will retire also. And permanently. You'll have to work fast, Prentice, if you expect to carry out your plan. Mr. Carter, you underrate me. I have plenty of time. First a bullet into each of you. Then through this window. And a... What's that? The police, Prentice. Police? Okay, Prentice. But I it. warned you, Louis. Thanks for the opening, Prentice. Smash the light, will you, Carter? That won't help you. Yeah, miss me. Hard to hit what you can't see, isn't it? Uh, now that your gun's jammed, I'll show you that this is the most effective way. Okay, boy. Bring it down. Over here, Matty. Are you all right? Sure, sure, I'm all right. Turn on your flash. Yeah. Uh, hey, what's Prentice doing here? Prentice? Uh, he's the big boss of this whole panhandling racket. What? And the other one with the bullet wound you already know. Big Louis Arkin. I... I'll say I know him. He looks in bad shape, Matty. You better get what you can out of him while he can still talk. <laughs> Nick, I just spoke to Sergeant Matheson over the phone. Oh, yeah? Big Louie gave him the whole story before he died, all about the killing of Foxy Farrell, everything. You know, Patsy, it's funny how Prentice masqueraded as a respectable citizen for so long. <laughs> Why, Big Louie, whom Prentice sent up the river, never knew who his boss in this racket was. <sighs> well, anyway, Nick, the sergeant tells me this panhandling racket is definitely finished. Oh, oh. Hmm? Speaking of panhandling, Patsy, I've got something on my conscience. On your conscience? Yes, seven dollars and twenty-five cents. It's the money I mooched while I was snuffy, Davis. Remember? <laughs> hey, what'll I do with it? Well, uh, why not give it to your boys' club, Nick? Ah, oh, Patsy, you would think of a nice thing like that. That way, the money will really go to help those who need it, and that's what it was given to me for. Mm -hmm. 